What's going on everybody? This is Niklas Hoschmidt and today I would like to share another game of mine from the European Championship 2018 played in Batumi, Georgia. And this game is from the 8th round of the tournament and I was playing with the white pieces against Pavel Ponkratov, strong Russian Grandmaster with a rating of 26-11, something like this, 26-10 something around there so very strong player and higher rate than i am let's get into it i was playing with the white pieces starting e4 and he played e5 bishop c4 knight f6 and here i went for d4 to surprise him a little bit he goes e takes d4 e5 and here the main line is d5 but he went for knight e4, knight e4 also completely playable but i looked at this before for the game a little bit and this is an interesting kind of try to go c3 here offering a pawn but for good development so it's good he didn't take it good for him not so good for me d3 queen e3 i don't want to give up my bishop for the knight obviously so i'm not taking the pawn bishop b7 b4 this is all this was all my preparation d5 takes bishop takes and now knight bd2 why is in no hurry to take this pawn on d3 right now and development is more important and here you play bishop f4 queen e4 castle and now i could take on d3 maybe i should have taken on d3 but i said okay let me play a useful move and see what he's going to do next so i went rook e1 he went g6 probably in anticip anticipation of bishop takes d3 he wanted to stop me from threatening checkmate but this move has another drawback it's opening up some squares around his king is making his king a little bit more vulnerable so i play bishop takes e6 now and he has to take with the pawn to protect his bishop on f4 with the rook and now i go b5 threatening the knight the knight retreats to e7 and now i go c4 and when i saw this move i was very happy because i'm restricting the knight taking away the square from d5 also from the queen and most importantly, I'm opening up this diagonal. This is exactly what I was talking about when I said the black king is more vulnerable. By going g6, suddenly the dark squares around the king are more accessible for my pieces. And if you can imagine now, a battery of my queen, my bishop on this long diagonal would be devastating for black. So this is what I was trying to accomplish. Here my opponent fought for a long time and he went queen to d6. I was expecting a move like a6, but then I can still go bishop b2, and after a takes b5, I have this cute little move, g3, pushing away the bishop from protecting the e5 square. And now if the bishop takes d2, for example, I can go queen e5, threatening checkmate, and black has to go king f7. When after knight takes d2, I thought I have very good compensation here with the open Black King, and this is what I meant. Very nice battery on this long diagonal. Black has to go King F7 here because of the Bishop H6. I can go Knight G5, and it's immediately game over because Queen H8 make checkmate cannot be stopped. And if Bishop takes G5, I give mate on G7. So this was a possible line A6, maybe a little bit better, but Queen D6 also a possible move g3, bishop h6, bishop b2, a6, and here maybe I should just go a4, just to be able to take back with the a pawn, and it's okay, I'm a little bit better. Bishop b5 is what I played, I thought I can push the queen back first, and it worked, because he went to d8, which is not the best square here, he should go to c5 or a3, and it's very much unclear. And maybe just to queen to a3, which is, I think, a move I missed, I just didn't see this move existed because actually now I'm not able to play a4, he's still protecting a d3 pawn. This looks like a smart move. Probably didn't like that he's giving up the c7 pawn potentially, but this is probably not most important in this position. So he goes queen d8, I go a4, take, 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 take. And now he played knight f5, a move I was happy to see. I thought he needs to go c6, he needs to get some breathing space for his pieces. c6, rook a3 was my plan to go after a d3 pawn. After I didn't take it in the beginning, it has survived for a very long time, but now 
it's about to die. Rook a3, c takes b5, rook takes d3, queen e8, and this still looks quite pleasant for white because black has the worst pawn structure here with a weakness on e6, and also, of course, the worst king. Still, black has to watch out for these ideas, queen e5, and so on, and this looks pleasant for white as well. But in the game, my position is even better. Knight f5, rook a3, queen e7, rook takes d3. And here my opponent went for a dubious plan to play knight d6, knight f7. That only helped me, actually, because the knight is not that well placed in f7. I can play bishop f6, hitting the queen, queen d6, queen c3. Of course, I don't trade queens right now. King, safety is better for me, so that's why I keep the queens on the board. It's a usual... That's a useful rule of thumb. If your opponent offers a queen trade, you want to consider which king is safer. And if your king is safe, you want to keep the queens on the board. And vice versa, if you have a weak king, then you want, in many cases, try to trade queens. Because, of course, without queens, a mating attack is much more unlikely to succeed. So, here, queen c5. And this is an interesting moment. And actually, let's make this an exercise for you guys. What to play here with white. There are actually two winning moves here. So if you want to be especially ambitious, try to find them both. So stop the video right now and see this ex your exercise of the day. All right, so the move I played just looked very good. And it is G4 taking away the f5 square, the h5 square, and suddenly the black queen just doesn't have many squares on the fifth rank, to be exact, it has none. So g4 is a very nice move, preparing knight e4, but even stronger was the direct knight e4. But you have to see what to do after the queen f5, which I didn't see in the game, and if you saw this, then kudos to you, because it's not easy to see. Knight d4 is possible. Very, very beautiful. Queen takes e4 and the queen is trapped in the middle of the board, has nowhere to go and the queen has to give itself up for the rook. But now black just says rook and bishop for the queen and white should be winning here in the long run, that's for sure. So this was even better. But g4 is also pretty good because knight e4 is a strong threat and the knight is ready to come to f6 potentially. He went for bishop takes d2. Yeah, also g4 is another threat, often in the position if let's say e5 immediately, knight e4. Uh, queen goes somewhere. I also have this move g5 available. But also here I can take on e5. I mean I have many, many, many options. But g5, bishop g7, take, take, knight takes e5 looks about crushing as well and the f6 square is a very nice square for the knight all right so you, he went bishop takes d2 knight takes and now e5 knight e4 queen b6 and bishop e7 vacating the f6 square for the knight if rook e8 knight f6 check is very strong so he played queen e6 Knight f6 check. If bishop takes f8, black takes on g4 check, and yes, I'm better here, but not that much, because black has a pawn for the exchange, and my king is open, so this would be pretty difficult to convert. But I saw this option to keep my g4 pawn, and greedy as I am, I like to keep all my material if I can, and it just works out here. King takes f8, and now rook f3. This looks a little bit awkward, but it works out for white protecting the knight on f6. If e4, there are many ways here, but one that I like is knight takes e4, queen takes, queen h8 check, and queen f6 check, picking up the knight, and it's all over. So my opponent went king g7, h4, b6, and g5. Now I've stabilized my knight on f6, and I was Confident about my chances, the only problem was I was low on time, but only a few more moves to make until the time control. Bishop b7, rook g3, queen f5. And now black is threatening some things here with the queen, queen b1 check and checkmate on the, on h1, so I have to be careful. And I decided to just to just 
block this diagonal of knight d5, which is not the best move. I should go something like king f1, but who does that, right? King f1, queen b1, checking king e2. I mean, this move didn't even cross my mind. Knight d5 is also good, but here, if he was to play queen b1 check and only now queen e4, he would have posed me some more problems, even though white is also the favorite here. I mean, a clear favorite to win for sure. But he went queen e4 immediately, and now it was my last move before the time control. Black is threatening the pawn, and I like this move very much to go h5. I give up one pawn, but I open up the black king a little bit. And now I went queen d3. And the point is that, for example, here I'm suddenly threatening to go g6 and just win immediately in the attack. So black goes knight d6. When now g6 wouldn't be that impressive. Actually, did I even think about this move? g6. Okay, at the very least, black can go h6, but maybe I'll also move like h4 here. I didn't even really think about it for some reason. I went queen to f3, introducing some ideas with queen f6 check and then followed by g6, so black has to do something about it. And my opponent went queen e4. Now trading queens, I took, and I went rook d3, which is an important move because if I go somewhere else, let's say a3 is somewhere, then knight d6 is strong and the problem is that my knight is pinned and let's say I play a move like rook a7, then black takes on d5 and takes on b5 and this end game I won't win. But after rook d3, I can always take on d5 with the rook. So let's say if knight d6 now, which didn't happen, let's say I can go f3, knight, and now bishop takes d5, knight, rook takes d5, and that's, that's a whole different story. And okay, knight takes c4, just knight takes c7. So he goes knight takes g5, picking up this pawn. I go king g3, unpinning my knight and threatening to take on c7. He goes check. And now king h4, and when I spotted this king h4, I was quite happy because it wasn't clear where to put my king, but this is this is good. I'm going after this pawn. If knight takes f2, which he didn't play, then I can go rook g3 check, and quite an awkward check for black to face, because the king cannot go to the f-file, since then I can pick up the knight on f3, uh, on f2 by giving rook f3 check, and after king h6, the king is also displaced, misplaced on h6. So instead he went knight d6 and here I played knight takes c7 which is good. There's also c5 which I saw as well. It's also good with the idea of knight takes b5 and knight takes c7. Very nice. Knight takes rook d7 check, take on c7 and win. But I play knight takes c7, knight takes c4, and first I want to go rook d7 check here. Then I said, hold on a minute, <laughs> hold on a minute, knight e8 check, and knight d6 is forcing the trade. And this just this is just a killer. It's just immediately game over. Because I'm trading one pair of minor pieces, and that's it. If black takes, I take on d6, take on b6, there's nothing to say. And the only other move the black has is both his pieces are attacked is to go knight a5. But now I just take on b7, go rook d7. I also pick up the pawn on b6 and the pawn, the b pawn decides the game. Black has to get his pieces back to defend the pawn and he has succeeded, but he has no play. He has, there's nothing he can do here. He has no counterplay. He pr pretty much has to wait until I pick up this pawn, then bring my king back, and it's a very, very easy win. So this is why my opponent decided to resign here. So I was quite happy with how this game went. I got my opening preparation in, then managed to find a sequence with opening the, the diagonal for my bishop, and 
had very nice play on the dark squares. Then got a little bit wobbly around the time control I felt like, but in the end I never let the advantage slip and managed to convert then in this end game against a very strong opponent. So I was quite satisfied with the game and I want to share with you guys. So I hope you guys learned something, took something away from it. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions. I'll be happy to answer them. And then I'll see you again very soon. I have one more analysis coming from the European Championship round 10. So hope to see you in this video, in that video or in another one. So until then, bye, bye.